I want you to know I never thought that I would be a minister. For in my day, I can say that now. My God, I can say that deal. I can look back at these young people and I can say in my day. I did not see women stand up on the pulpit. In my day, when I was younger, when I was president of the Wesley Foundation in college, I was the first African-American student that was able to go to help with the merger. I didn't see a woman until one day I saw one lady named Dr. Carol Cotton Wynn with the robe on. And when I saw this woman with the robe on, immediately it spoke to my heart and said, that can be you. I still did not understand what God was saying to me. He was putting me into different events and places to go, and I was meeting these people, and everyone else started noticing something about me, but I did not know what it was. I started hearing people call me reverend, and I said, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not a reverend. Oh, no. Yes, I'm Creole. And at that time, there was nothing reverend about the Creole. <laughs> Creole with a little Choctaw Indian in me. If I get too mad, hey! <laughs> whole lot of stuff happens, okay? So I did not think God could use me. I think I had a what? A Jeremiah or a Moses season at that time. <laughs> I tell you. But I want you to know that during my life journey, I have enjoyed every bit of it. I am in a sec I'm called a second career clergy person. I pray that you will hear your call this week at this event and that you wouldn't wait as long as I did. Because you see, when you wait and you're disobedient, something happens. I pray that you don't get your neck broke like Reverend Connie got hers. Because I, I was started. I had to get my head knocked against the wall to know that God was calling me. But I stand before you saying, listen, watch. God is setting you up. Somebody invited you here today. You've been set up. By tomorrow, before you leave, you will know you have been set up. I have been to more than almost 12 to 15 of these student forums, and every time, at the end, someone feels the call. Someone has just had their heart knocked upon, and God said, I need you. God never leaves us, but we always need him. Are you running? Are you doing a Jonah? Are you evading like Moses? Or could you be like Mary? Mary didn't run. Mary said, your servant. In the community that I am in now, only God could do what he's done with me. I'm called the woman at the well, not because of husbands, OK? But I'm called the woman at the well because I'm a barrier breaker. You see, the woman at the well, when she went to the well, to Jacob Well, to get her water, she happened to go, and she was very respectful. She went to the well in the noonday, because she was a Samaritan woman. And at that time of noonday, if you know anything about the people over in that area, they pray around that time. So they were not there. They were praying or in church or having a siesta or having lunch. So a girlfriend went to get her some water. And when she went to get the water, she happened to meet a Jew. And the Jew was Jesus. She just broke what? A barrier. Because a Jew and a Samaritan didn't what? They didn't talk. They didn't get along. But she met a man that knew everything about her. <coughs> she broke some barriers. She went and ran and told them about it. That's who I am. I'm one, I'm a trailblazer, and I'm a barrier breaker. 
If I see it and I understand what God is saying, I'm going to stand and stand alone if I must. Because God told me what? Fear not. You heard that last night. Fear not, but God is with you. I want you to know that if God is tugging at your heart tonight, fear not, for God is with you. God has a team waiting for you. All you got to do is say yes. I had a team. I did not realize that I had such an almighty team. I had a diverse team. I have people right now that know me that I don't even know who they are. And a short story. People that know me and they don't even know what color I am. <laughs> I went to speak for a United Methodist Women service in a little town called Alexander, Louisiana. So I took some of my girls with me. And I happened to, I never stay in hotels if I don't have to. Because if you want to know people, you, if they invite you to stay in their home, stay in their home. Because then you're doing music. So I stayed in the home of the lady who invited me. And I was helping in her kitchen with her. So a bunch of elderly old ladies, uh, the youngest was probably 80, that came in. And they walked in the door, and I went to the door, and I said, welcome. And they said, well, yeah, hi. And where is Debbie? I said, well, Debbie's in the kitchen right now. And so they gave me their coat, and they said, OK, and who are you? I said, well, I'm Connie. And when the lady looks at me, she said, isn't that, isn't that the lady name that's going to be our speaker, Connie? And I said, oh, her name is Connie. She said, yeah. What's your last name? I said, my name is Connie Bro. The lady looked at me, she said, Connie Bro? I said, yeah. I wanted to just fall out laughing because you know what? I broke a barrier with her. She did not expect to see a black woman in the white lady's kitchen who was staying all night with her. She expected me to be uh, someone else, not who I am. But not until I sat down and I ate dinner with them and we became intimate did she see the real person. She saw the Jesus in me. And I saw seeing the Jesus in her. We broke barriers. Can you break barriers? Can you forget about someone's color? Can you invite someone that doesn't look like you and to stay in your home? Can you forget about that? Because if you can, then you got a calling on your life. But if you don't know how to forget about color line and sexual orientation and all those things, those isms, then you need to stay on your knees a little longer and ask God, what do you have for me? You see, God ain't looking for the ability. God is looking for passion. This week you have been here and you are here learning about what your passion is. I hope you did. You did wonderful for the choir. That's an awesome way of worshiping. I had passion for the labyrinth. God gave me a vision for the labyrinth. I think I'm the first campus minister to bring the labyrinth to the student forum, and from that, everybody else started getting labyrinths. Another breaker. What is it that you have that you can bring to the kingdom of God? What gift do you bring? What are you doing with your life? Are you just sitting there because you're scared your friends are going to laugh at you? I got two young ministers with me tonight. They're from non-denominational churches as youth pastors. And they are my leaders. They are 19, or 20 and 21, I think, now. One just was ordained. I love what God is doing. With your generation, you're not afraid to walk out on your faith. You've got to have faith, and you've got to be able to stand when nobody else stands with you. If you cannot stand, for what God has given you, then you can't stand for anything for God. Amen. He needs someone that got passion. Yes. He needs someone that say, I'm here I am, Lord. Send me, Isaiah said it, in the wilderness. Can you say, Lord, here I am, send me? Yes. Or are you afraid? Because the community is not going to understand. 
Well, I come to tell you right now, I said yes, even when I was a teenager and didn't realize what I did. I did not realize that God was using me in all those spots as being president of MYF. President, y'all don't know about MYF, huh? Well, you see, that was the movement before your United Methodist Student Movement was. Okay? So it was the Methodist Youth Fellowship. I did not know that God was setting me up and had me to be one of the students from the Conference B to stand among many people in my conference and speak about the merger. I did not know that God was using me and set me up. He's setting somebody up tonight. Somebody's being set up. Allow God to just order your steps in his word. Allow God to be God in your life. Stop worrying about what my friends are going to say about Because I want you to know he will change your walk. He'll put you in a brand new house. And God, there's an old song says, I told Jesus he can change my name. It would be all right if you changed my name. And then Jesus said, but the world would be against you if I changed your name. Do you know the world would be against you if you changed your name? So I say to you today, Allow God to order your steps. In closing, remember that God empowers where God calls. Choir. God empowers where God calls. He gives you what you need. You may think you have to find it all in the classroom, in the textbook, but I want you to know you've been set up right here in this place right now. You're getting what you need. God is only interested in your passion and your availability. He's not interested in your ability. Because those of you that have a passion for serving the elderly, you may not know anything about changing a diaper for an elderly person. I had never seen my mother in the news. But I'm the firstborn. God gave me a, a power and a courage to do things I never thought I could do. I was able to take care of my mom until she died. I was able to do things, you all, with other people that I never knew I could do in the old folks' home. I even became a star in an old folks' home. They would see me on television and say, Reverend Connie's on television. And when I walk into the nursing home, there she is. Nobody but a God and God alone can do that. He would order your steps. You don't have to be older. You don't have to be eloquent in your speech. You don't have to be a prophet or a preacher. You can be an accountant. Did you not know for the clergy? You can be a church accountant. Did you know that you can be that? We need you. Preachers need an accountant, a good accountant. I tell you about that because I don't like RS. <laughs> We need good marketers in the church. We need good business people in the church. We also need good politicians that are saved and know who God is. We need to know that government started within the church, not out there. In the Roman Empire, it was the government. That was the church. Don't give up what God has given you. Allow God to be God in your life. Give over to God. He will inform you of your task. He will walk with you if you allow him. Just let God be God in your life. And let him order your steps.